where we bring in companies to try to get them to stay here. It's a lot of money in Cartagena, especially in this area right here. So yes, the grind is necessary for sure. Walking through a really rich neighborhood. There's something going on with that guy and they, they were trying to do something. I don't know what, what. I don't know what they were trying to do, but it ain't right. What's up guys? Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Hassan El Sadiq. Today is July 20th, 2024. It's Saturday and it's a beautiful day here in Cartagena, Colombia. Um, not much on the agenda today. I'm going to film a video. Uh, a board talk video about who my customers are, um, my target customers. Um, this is important. If you don't know who your customer are, your potential customer, uh, and you're just throwing a rock into an ocean, it's going to be hard to directly connect with the person you're talking to, right? Um, it's like you're just don't throwing a dart into a wide pool of people and hoping it hits. That's just not a, a, a good um, concept for business. So what I did is I kind of wrote down who the hero story framework is for. And I have a couple of examples. Uh, I seen a guy in this video in 10 days has, blown up like crazy so it's a guy he uh was a neurosurgeon and he quit and he's telling his story it's a 48 minute video and it's so simple but the point is the story is what garnered this thing 8.2 million views in 10 days and there's another guy um it's catching some traction. This video, I think is a few days old. And he has 22,000 views. And it's about how he is more happier broke rather than being a millionaire, which he was. And he's telling this story. And that's why I continue to say like, story is the most important thing. If you look at movies, it's a story. Documentaries, it's a story. Anything in life should be a story. Every business, whether it's Coca-Cola, they have that story. And anyone that wants to be a personal brand, an entrepreneur, even an entrepreneur, they should be honing in on that story. One of the most important parts about a startup that I have learned in my process as I'm building my startup is what's the story of that startup? Especially when you don't have any like hardcore traction to get an investor to, to, to come on because you don't have the numbers. It's the story and the connection that this person that's building this company has to that business. And you, as a business, that story is where it starts. And that's why I'm doing the hero story framework, because for me, you're talking about documenting my story for almost 18 years. You don't have to document your story for 18 years and have the footage to put in and place the footage into videos as you're telling stories. You can just comb through your complete story, starting with your origin story to part two, the journey of your findings and part three, part four, part five, and structure your story so you can craft your story so it's secondhand nature 
of what value you're going to be able to add your customers first off because that's the that's the key thing but then also what problem you are going to solve and the problem is a problem the easiest way to to do it is the problem that you're solving is something that you solve for yourself now you can solve it for others faster right and help them and get them value from your experience and that's why it's so important to flush out that hero story from start one part one to part five so i'm going to go on a board and i'm going to actually talk about who this is actually for and then we're going to get through get to our day and um see what saturday has to offer us here in cartagena colombia so if i complete my mission millions of people will benefit from something being bigger than me and that equates to one thing it's one word purpose okay so that last person has a purpose to add value in the world to a person to people and that thing that experience that journey that hero story is bigger than them like the like the whole like the just just from just from the start like the the entire the entire thing is what I'm what I'm aware of is that she she came she came down there during during the even time. Okay, yeah, let me say it so there's no confusion. So we just got an Airbnb. Um, I grabbed the keys from the table, and uh, I had a we had went somewhere, and then we came back, and then just me. It was my mess up. It was my mess up. Okay, so 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 we so we so we we have our copy of, the key, of our keys. Okay, so we so she just she needs to give she so we need to give you your your copy. Yeah, basically. Okay. All right. Well, let me let me let me coordinate let me coordinate the time. I, I'll let I'll, I'll let you know. I just because I I need I needed to know exactly what happened because I was like I was like very very confused because I didn't because I I, 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 I I didn't understand why she had like my mother's an older lady like I didn't understand like how she why she had to get you know get out of bed and come and go down there when she told me that so. Yeah, yeah, I understand. That was, that was my fault. That was my fault. Cause like I, I, I literally, if you see our keys, they like literally look the same kind of, you know. Yeah, I see. I see. You know, I seen it on the picture. I seen it. I seen the picture through the uh, through the messages. Yeah, yeah. So they like look alike, and like that's my fault. Like I told you, take it and take that. And I was gonna say if like you can meet or anything like that, you cash out for the convenience and stuff like that too. Okay. All right. Let me let me let me uh, let me coordinate it, and then I get back. I get right back to you. All right, thank you. Right. I'm, I'm also gonna, gonna take you up on that, the cash app as well, okay? All right. All right, cool. Yeah, every every everything that he everything that he's saying does, does it just doesn't sound right. He put the key, he put the keys in the he put the keys in the in, in the, the glove compartment. And all, just everything he's saying just does not. None of it makes sense. Yeah. So I I I just got off, I just got off the I just got off the phone with him. Yeah, you could tell you could you could tell he uh, he he he's something going on with that guy, and they they were trying to do something. I don't know what what. I don't know what they were trying to do, but it ain't right. Nothing seems right with this 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 fella. Mm -hmm. None of it make any sense. All of a sudden, it's a big issue. This key. And then it's a, if you look at if you look at the thing, it's his key. He took a picture of. Yeah, I know. I seen it. I, I, so why exactly are you even saying anything about that key? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, you took a picture of the key. So I had two conversations today, this morning per se. And mind you, right now it's only like it's eight fifty five. And one of the ways that I'm able to. Uh, have income while I'm here is through an Airbnb that's in that's in Buffalo and we had a problem with uh, 
one of the Airbnb residents that came in, real, real shady business, man, that this guy was trying to do. And while I'm here running all dreams, my mother, we work together to do this Airbnb. And um, there's a guy that's just doing some shady, shady business. It's just everything about this guy sounds shady. Just, just a fucking shady character. Uh, I, I don't get people, right? I just really don't get people, you know, that try to identify people to do scams and it's 2024 is so much you can do in this world that is prosperous that you can make that you can earn money you don't have to take from people you know just apply yourself and I can tell I'm talking to this guy on the phone as I'll probably put this into the episode for today the today's episode and you could just tell just something that's not right you can tell this guy's a crook he's you know he's he's a bad person he's a bad person and while I'm here I worry for my family because all of the things that like that that goes on not just in America but everywhere in the world you know this is a very very hard part about being someplace and still having to be faithful that your family is protected while you are not there to physically protect them, you know? So that's always hard. Same thing, uh, my daughter, my daughter, my middle daughter, she lives in, um, she lives in Washington State, Seattle area, and she got her first job. She got her first job at Taco Bell, and I was like very, very proud of her. But the Taco Bell that she got the job at is attached to a truck stop, right? And I don't want her to work there. Right uh, at all, I don't want her to hurt her to work there. She's excited about her job, and she's excited about you know making her own money. And I get it, I understand it, but she's a kid and she has a naiveness about what goes on in the world. And me, even if I was in Buffalo, I couldn't pr physically protect her being in Washington, but it makes me worry. But being in Colombia makes me more worried. And what do you do as a parent? You just say, hey, well, okay, you're gonna make $17 an hour. You're going to make this amount of money. You should, do you just, okay, I don't want you to work there. You just give them money, you know? Um, it's a very, very hard situation because obviously you don't want anything you understand, I personally, as a man, I understand how dangerous of situations that could be and how dangerous many people come through those, those businesses. That's why it's always important to set, try to set up your family. These are some, like a lot of the difficulties that I'm personally going through right now. Um, trying to build a business with all these other things on my mind. I was talking to a friend yesterday, he has no no kids, he, you know, he's just living for himself. And I'm like, if I'm you, man, I don't know how, how, how much I would be soaring because I've had to deal with a lot of single father issues. I've mean, I had to deal with a lot of issues with my two oldest daughter's mother for 14, 15 years. When you're trying to build something, it's just like, it's such a, a blockage and a barrier when you have to deal with 
these type of people that just will never get it together. That's why for young guys, make sure you choose the woman that you're gonna have cho children with wisely. That's why I talk about like, man, like date. Why, are, you know what I mean? Dating only sets you up for a fuck up. I say just get one woman, build some shit. Oh, you coming through Boca? You coming through Boca right now? Yeah, we coming through right now, bro. Yeah, it's, it's still not enough to play the beach. Tell you the truth. Huh? Yeah, I might just uh, get some. I said it's still early enough to play the beach. Man, you know what? You know what I was thinking? I was thinking about going to the beach today, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, what else, bro? On the whole Saturday, it's still early. And shit, I probably could just get some random to drop some off to eat. And, uh, you know? Probably take a couple of shots, head to the beach. Shit. You know what I'm saying? It's time to unwind now. All right, shit. I'm, I'm going to meet you over there then. Yeah, for sure. See this house right here. I'm walking through a really rich neighborhood here in Cartagena, Colombia. And I want to talk about something real fast. It's Saturday. I'm chilling, man. I'm headed to the beach. But um, I want to talk about something real fast because I know once people really start watching my videos they're like yo this guy works a lot yes it does take a lot of work to to build anything but one of the reasons why i'm here is because i can also relax and enjoy the weather and also the beach and just the the vibes here um Silicon Valley, where all the tech startups are, you know, the big tech startups, where they started from, that wasn't always there. It was, you know, based in the big cities, New York mainly, where private equity and venture capitalist guys were. And some guys went out to Silicon Valley because it was just way more chill. No suits, the t-shirts, the relaxed environment and that was very very good for exchanging money investing in companies and things like that um, so yes the grind is necessary for sure for sure grind is necessary but also the relaxation, the clarity of your mind. Just the word grind, you gotta think about it. I always think when I say, yo, you know what I mean? Because I, I used to say it all the time, yo, I'm grinding, I'm grinding, I'm grinding. But you're gonna grind yourself out if you continue to grind. Just think about breaks grinding, right? It's not a good thing for you as a person to just grind yourself out. I have a, as I walk through this rich neighborhood with all these high rises and I have a, a larger plan that I've never talked about with being here in Cartagena. And that plan consists of making Cartagena uh, 
a small tech hub with companies that want to come here and build their company. So that's what I really, you know, after maybe I exit my company, I think that will be the next phase of what I want to do is maybe my own accelerator where we bring in companies to try to get them to stay here. It's a lot of money in Cartagena, especially in this area right here. These high rises that you see, um, those are mostly empty. Like this is like a vacation place. So half of the year, these a lot of these condos and these high rises just are empty. Even the, the one over there, it's only like, like it's only 25% occupancy is a, like, like rich business people that are from Bogota that own million dollar condos and that the, the it's a building, it's like the newest building, it's the biggest building, it's the most expensive build, building. But um, it's like only 25% occupied and 75% unoccupied. So half of the year, these buildings are empty. But as far as for doing business, it's great for doing business because you come here on a relaxed vibe. Um, you come here, I can see people cutting half a million dollar deals, quarter million dollar deals, 50, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Half, half a $1 million deals, quarter million dollar deals, million dollar deals, $50,000 deals, poolside or beachside. And because the, the atmosphere is so, so relaxed and it's such a, it's a lot of money and it's an untapped market as far as tech. There's no startups here. And when I talk about startups, they don't even know really about startups, right? So my long-term goal is to build startups here in Cartagena. Um, anybody that want to do it with me, let me know. But I think it's a lot of opportunity. I don't know why anyone, why they're not doing it because it's a perfect place to do business. Perfect place where a startup founder will want to be is just relaxed. Um, it's hot. You got the beach. You can work during the day and enjoy the city during the evening. And it's close to it's close to the United States, so therefore, people can you know your friends and family can always fly in, and you can always have uh, business partners or potential investors fly in and things like that uh, to enjoy the city. But that's my long-term goal is to, to do like an accelerator or something like that here in Cartagena and bring some startups to base here in Cartagena, Colombia. But today, like I said, it's, not, it's no grinding. I'm up early every single day. Just, you know, had to take a couple calls and uh, edit some stuff and, um, I filmed something on, on the board today, but nothing major, nothing major. And I'm headed to the beach and it's like, it's three o'clock, it's three o'clock. So I've really been chilling since one. And man, I'm telling you, it's a lot of opportunity out here. Uh, startup opportunity and it's a lot of money out here. So man, just look, look at me. I don't even understand how warm this water is right now. It's so warm. It feels so good.
One thing I love to swim. I'm gonna go swimming right now. Put my bag up. That's the video for today. See you guys tomorrow. Peace.